All right, here we are. Welcome to week five, day one of Muse 360. I hope you are well, feeling good, all that beautiful stuff. Uh, it's a brisk day at the homestead, the first day of frost here. So I got to get the wood stove going, which is like one of my favorite things in the world, which is about damn time I've been processing firewood, it feels like, for months now. So anyways, uh, yeah, hope you're good. Um, today we are going to begin our, our chat about uh, sampling and music. Uh, in hip hop music, although we've been we've been talking about it in various various capacities, some of the techniques, some of the evolutions in the technology, and then most importantly, how the technology has been used, because you know that's a really important thing. I think that hip hop um, demonstrates is that you are the technology, um, meaning like it's not the 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 buttons and sliders and turntables that you have before you that that do the work you are you know it's how you apply technique to the technical elements the buttons and the electronics that makes you the technology and hip hop i think really highlights highlights that and that's one of the things i've been trying to push in this class is 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 it's the people um and so uh, we're going to move, uh, you know, today into watching a film called Copyright Criminals um, by Kemba McLeod. We should have, you know, um, read some chapters of his. He's, he, we'll read more from him. Um, he teaches at the University of Iowa <clears throat> and Kemba a just a cool dude, written a lot about sampling in music and in hip hop music. Um, this film was released through uh, Independent Lens, which is PBS's uh, documentary d independent distribution arm. Um, and it holds a, a place in my heart uh, for multiple reasons. I invited Kembrew here to the University of Oregon in like 2008, maybe 2007, um, to screen an early rough cut of the film to a large audience. It was super dope. And then, you know, we got to talking and he actually put, put me on doing a bunch of music for it. So I did a bunch of beats and I did a bunch of DJ mixes and I'll, I'll flash the end credits where you see me tucked in between. But a lot of my stuff actually on the final edit <laughs> hit the cutting room floor, except for maybe one DJ mix part that I did. Um, largely because uh, he ended up involving Eclectic Method, and you'll see in the film, who are like video mashup DJs, um, you know, who actually replaced a lot of the stuff I did, which is fine, it's totally cool, I'm cool. Um, but, you know, so, so definitely, like, I have a vested interest in this in the sense of, like, you know, I like, I like the topic, I like being a part of it, it was dope to, you know, um, You fucking peck me. Um, you know, I can't do anything outside without these birds bugging me. But, um, you know, I also just think the ideas in it are rad. It captures just a really cool uh, moment in terms of uh, really focuses heavily on Clyde, Clyde Stubblefield, the drummer in the James Brown band, um, who doesn't get credit for the funky drummer drum break, um, doesn't, never got paid for it. He passed away a few years ago. Um, so it's really interesting in that in that sense, you know, that that he's involved so heavily in the in the film focuses a lot on him and his work that that he uh, that he did. Um, with that said, you know, um, the film, you know, it, it talks to a ton of like pioneering hip hop producers from Public Enemy, um, lots of DJs, lots of MCs you know, uh, that Kembrew was able to interview. So it's pretty cool because it ties in a lot of people, a lot of record people, a lot of executives, um, you know, from record labels, owners from record labels involved in some of these issues. Um, it also uh, brings in one person who's kind of the um, anti-sampling voice in this because everybody's pretty much pro-sampling in, in most ways. Um, his name is Steve Albini, and Steve is interesting. You'll know who he is. He's a recording engineer who, uh, you know, who recorded P the Pixies and um, uh, Nirvana's album In Utero and a bunch of, like, 
rock bands and stuff. He's a, he's kind of an asshole. He's very sarcastic. He's very critical of the music industry. Um, he is a, a pretty important figure in um, in uh, engineering and recording technique. Um, so he's pretty. He's a pretty interesting dude, you know. Um, and he kind of gets a bad rap in this film because he's like the one person. Go on, ladies, come on. Uh, that doesn't like sampling. Um, and he has his own reasons for it, you know, because he's a musician and he's an engineer and he sees the work that goes into um, records and he represents the, the idea of, like, you're just taking people's music, you're taking their life career. Their, their career. Um, so, anyways, with that said, here's a few um, questions that, uh, you know, I, I, I've provided to you, but they'll help guide your viewing of this film. Um, seriously, y'all need to like bug off, yo. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so just think about and pay attention to what are the arguments for and against sampling. Why do people sample? Why shouldn't you sample? Okay, um, you know, is sampling at least how it's presented in the film? You know, about tribute? Is it about theft? Is it about just trying to take work? Why do people? Why do people sample it? You know. Um, do the, is it explained as creative, artistic, or, or what, you know? Just kind of be f familiar with that. Really focus on the, um, the economic uh, elements of sampling. So who gets paid? Who doesn't get paid? Uh, why and how, okay? Um, who gets royalties? What's the deal with session musicians like Clyde Stubblefield, um, et cetera, okay? Um, Think about, you know, really focus on Clyde Stubblefield. Who is he? What did he do? Um, why do you think people like the funky drummer drum break? Like, why did hip-hop producers kind of, like, gravitate towards that? Why did they gravitate towards Impeach the President, which isn't covered in here, or Synthetic Substitution, or, you know, um, any, like, the Skull Snaps breaks, like, any of the real classic drum, like, drum breaks, okay? Um... Think about this, like, how is copyright law, as explained in the film, right, uh, ad adapted to the, the techniques of sampling, um, you know, like, how has laws changed to reflect the change in culture and economics of, of rap and hip-hop, okay? Um, and, like, you know, how has, you know, has the law kept up with the, the new technology? Seriously, bug off. Go on. Jesus. Um, there's two important sampling cases brought up in this, so uh, focus and just kind of acknowledge them. Number one, one's going to involve De La Soul. It actually never went to court. Um, they settled out of court. And then number two, the Bismarck Key case. Okay, just focus on that. Um, it's Gilbert, Bismarck Key versus Gilbert O'Sullivan. Okay. Um, and then just think about how these lawsuits change sampling. Um, the technique of sampling, like, how did they change that? How did they change the sound of hip-hop? Um, and there's a quote by LP, you know, um, at the end where he says, if you, can under if you can hear where I got my shit from, I haven't done my job, okay? Um, so let's just pay attention to that. Think about how new forms of creativity have developed in response to the tightening of the law, you know, because a lot of these early producers, beat makers, there was no court precedent, case precedent, legal precedent um, at all about sampling because no one, no one did it and people didn't think like hip hop was economically viable. Remember people thought it was a fad and so the, the music industry wasn't really paying attention to what these dudes were doing, you know, what people were doing making, making beats because they just, they didn't think that they were making that much money, they didn't think it was um, it was the juice was worth the squeeze to go after them and then once it like yeah like this is something this is not going anywhere people are making money off of our art and what we own then they started going after them. all right so this is copyright criminals think about those things as you watch it some of these things will be covered um you know on some of our exams and quizzes and stuff so do pay attention uh don't touch that dial well actually touch that dial move on press play on copyright criminals and we'll talk about about it on the flip Enjoy!